This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. different theme tonight because uh, somehow the old theme wasn't working okay no so much for that hello everybody alex bennett here and this is of course the uh, ramble and it goes on from now until uh, uh midnight tonight and as always, uh, 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 one of our very special guests is here. Ladies and gentlemen, it's always a pleasure to talk to the following person. The following person. That's a ter- terrible way of describing you. The following person. He's following me everywhere I go. Is L- Larry Brown. or is Landline he affect- Larry. La- landline <laughs> Larry. Or is he's affectionately known as Bubbles. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. Uh, still the landline, right, Larry? Still got my landline and uh, still on the dial-up, but uh, I'm, I'm looking at, uh, I think AT&T's got high speed for 30 bucks, so I should probably get it. But. Well, then we, could, then we could do things like Skype, but then again, how old's your machine? It's about 12 years old. Oh, well, forget that. Um... I don't think. I, I wonder if we can get Skype to work on a twelve-year-old machine. Well, if I get the high speed, we'll find out. Yeah. Now, why is it that you're so far behind? Is it out of any particular uh, uh, aversion, or is it just that you don't care? Well, I have a big aversion to change, and then it's. Uh, and I think it's because I know if I get a new computer, I know I'll set it up and something's not going to work. And when mechanical things don't work, I tend to throw things. And, but, and you see, if, if, if that were the, if I were living out there, I would just come out and set yeah, it you up can set it up you. for me. Yeah, that'd be great. Well, get out here, okay. take a trip. Uh, yeah, well, I'm uh, I should probably just give up this whole thing, you know, with uh, with GabNet, and just start traveling because you know i'm getting close to death and (laughs) and um uh i think i ought to start spending my money see here's what i here's like this just bothers me i don't know if it bothers you either i have a finite amount of money because i didn't save a lot but i mean i've got some in stocks and things like that and i can keep going maybe for the next i don't know if I'm if I'm careful, next ten years between my social security and my pa- af- after pension and things like that, uh, I could probably keep going okay. But you know, I'd really like to spend all of it like crazy and go travel the world. But you can't if you knew when you were going to die, you could then spend your money appropriately. Yeah, that. Uh you don't want to. I don't want to die leaving money. <laughs> no, you don't want to die leaving money. In fact, I would like to die leaving debt. You got to leave a lot of debt. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like if I found out I had terminal cancer, it's time to max out all the cards and insulate my wife from from any kind of action against her. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, uh, but it, but if you just knew when you were going to die, you could then say, "Well, I have this much money, so I can spend that much." If I knew, like I have to go get into the PSA test on uh, uh, next week, see if my PSA has gone up, and maybe I have a, a prostate cancer. Who knows? You know, I, I I don't know. It could go down too. I'm just always like you. I think the worst because that way I'm controlling the situation. Yeah. But let's say I suddenly uh, have prostate cancer. Uh, now the question is, how long is I, am I going to live? But at least I have some idea that I have something that might kill me. So maybe I might start spending my money. But right now I'm going, suppose I live to be 100. I'm going to need somebody to wipe the spittle from my chin at the old folks' home, <laughs> which I'm going to have to pay for on some level. Otherwise, I'm going to be in one of these snake pits that they throw old people into. And those are horrible. My mother. But we, uh, we had to hospitalize her that way. And so we put her into this place. And it, 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 God 
knows these people were trying, but they didn't have the money to run it correctly. And so she was really living in one of those snake pits. And finally, we got her in the, the Jewish home for the aged. As I told her, because of two reasons. Number one, you're Jewish and you're aged. Uh, <laughs> and and that is like the Cadillac of, of, of old folks' homes. And what they do is she had like... Um, um, Social Security, so all her Social Security checks would go to them. And also, if she had a bank account, they would charge us $5,000 a month until that bank account was depleted. But once it was depleted, they said, we don't throw anybody out of here. Mm -hmm. So you get to stay there. And it's like there are only 300 people in the old in the uh, Jewish home for the age. There may be more now, but at that time, there were about 300. And there were about 300 employees. So that's a really good place, you know. And they did wipe the spittle from her mouth. In fact, the first thing <laughs> that's, they... That's cover, spittle removal is covered in the uh, contract. You're going to love this. My mother was like, uh, I don't know, 97 when she went in there, 98. And the first thing they did was shave her face. <laughs> Because she had all these hairs. You know, you see, you know how old people got like a long hair and it just keeps, they have nothing else to do with their lives. So they I'll see how long this hair can grow, you know. And uh, they shaved her and they got her neat and all of that. And, you know, then she sat in a room with a bunch of other people uh, who were likewise uh, going through dementia. Uh, and uh, she didn't have Alzheimer's, she just had dementia. And uh, uh, they would all be sitting around. And I noticed one day I went in, and except for one guy, they were all women. And so they outlive us. They outlive us, yeah. And uh, there was this one woman, every time I'd walk in, she would look at me and go, You a cop? <laughs> I, I, maybe she was, was a she retired hooker. <laughs> no, retired gun mall, I guess, you know. <laughs> Uh, but uh, uh, and then there was one guy, and he played the piano all the time for them, and that was nice. Uh, but it was it was it was still depressing, no matter how nice you made it. You know, the rooms were clean and they were taken care of, and all of that. You know. Yeah, I think uh, I don't know. Uh, Doctor Drew said most. He said you really don't want to live to be ninety. <laughs> Well, you don't want to be 90 because nobody takes care of you properly. You know, when you reach 90, you're approaching being a child again. You know, you need somebody exactly, to change your, yeah. You need somebody to change your diaper now and then. And uh, you know, you're you're reverting to the, the the needs of a child and yet because you're old, nobody thinks about that. You know, they, they fawn over a baby. Isn't the baby cute? Oh, the baby just wet himself, change the diaper, you know, feed the kid, you know, do all that. But when it's a 90-year-old person, they don't think that that's a regression and that she really is in many ways a child again. And so, they, you know, it, it was depressing. God, it was depressing. We don't want to wind up there. Jeez. So, you know, I'm, I, I have this great fear of death. You say you don't anymore? It's lessened, but there is kind of a fear. But then there's all so much. The alternative is being 90 and, like you said, no one Pooping cares your about pants. you. No one yeah. wants to take care of you. Hey, nobody so cares. I'm 77 and nobody cares. Okay? You know. Well, you got Sweetie. Well, I got Sweetie. Yeah, she doesn't care either. <laughs> you know, I complained to her about my ills. Shut up! I don't want to hear about your problems. <laughs> really? But then she's got eight thousand little problems, and she talks about them all the time. And I don't say shut the fuck up. You know. <laughs> and I'm a I'm a hypochondriac. Let's face it. You know, you are too, aren't you? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, we just spend our entire lives thinking about what is that thing that's going to come along and kill us. And there's so many. I, I, I was at the doctor's a couple of weeks. I was looking at the chart of the body, and there's you just think, oh my God, there's so much shit that can go wrong. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, it's, it's been unbelievable. going. It, 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 what's amazing about it, it's been going right for years. Yeah, that's what she said. Oh, I think it's amazing. So many things work right. I don't know. Well, you know, 
uh, except for the prostate. The prostate is the worst design piece of apparatus the human body has for a male because it surrounds the urethra. And then when it enlarges, it squeezes on the urethra, and then it's harder to pee. That's why old people go to the bathroom 20 times a day. Okay? Yeah. Old men. Uh, and so I, at that point, decided there was no God, because if there was a God and he was the perfect God, he wouldn't have made such a fucking structural mistake. Maybe he's just a mean guy. <laughs> he's probably a mean guy going, I want these people to have pissing problems when they get older. Oh, wait a minute, they invented a drug? Oh, fuck. You know. I think, I actually, you know, people think of God as, oh, you know, you see all these religious people and they go, oh, God's protecting me and God's, you know, God's, it's in God's hands, you know. I don't want anything in God's hands. He completely fucks up all the time. He makes lives miserable. Absolutely, yeah. A- if there is a God, he, 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 is, he is meanful, he's vengeful, and he's figured out several ways to put you in a great deal of pain. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and, oh, but God's God's going to help me, or I'm going to be with God. You really want to be with Him, really? The guy, this, <laughs> this judgment, your life. Up. <laughs> he's judgmental to begin with. If you believe in the God that they say exists, he's he's judgmental. Fuck that. Who need who needs judgment? You know. It's- it is amazing to me that people buy into religion. Uh, it's just such a well, fairy tale, I, I, all I, of them. I have to say I envy them because I fear death. They don't. You know? They think they're going to a better place. Boy, well, that, I mean, that's part of it. I think they, uh, that's how they uh, get over their fear of death. They think there's going to be something after this. And well, I have a slight notion of life after death, Okay. But it's not based on God or angels or hell or whatever. It's based purely on science and what we're beginning to find out about the universe and that this is only one of many universes if you believe in string theory and uh, the multi-universe and that we are all living our lives in different, literally different universes. There's something like it. 12 of them or something like that they figure and that you're living your life somewhere else and it, but it, it's not exactly the same as it is here you're determining what goes here you're determining what goes on in that other universe and that I, I, I you could actually continue in other universes you know I, I don't know you know I, this is all scientific stuff so maybe our life doesn't suck as much in the other universe yeah well I mean what are we you know, the, 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 this, this body that we have um, is uh, uh, basically just a body that uh, uh, is uh, uh, a vessel for what is our being. So when you die, does that being die? That's the question. You know, or is it just the flesh that's dying? You know, and, 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 and so do you, the, the, do you metamorphosize? I, I, who knows? Well, nobody knows. Never. Nobody's ever come back to tell us. <laughs> you know, there are all these people. So I died on the operating table, and they brought me back. And during that time, I saw, you know, white light. Well, if the white light is, is all your synapses shutting down. Yeah. You know. Boy, this is, we always have a really up- Very uplifting. Up, very uplifting. <laughs> Boy, this is getting the ratings, right? We, I, I had got, to take a knee on that. <laughs> you had to take a knee on that? <laughs> yes. Oh, man. No, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I want to believe. These people believe in God, believe they're going to a better place. They have no fear of death. I'm going to die, and I'm. it's a better place to be than right here. And for some of those people, it's true. You know? You're really poor, living in the South. You're broke, you know. Your life has been miserable for you all your life. You've never had a really happy moment. And so that idea of death and, and heaven and God is, uh, is something that gives you great uh, solace, you know. So. Yeah, that's how they cope with the present. 
That's how they cope with what? Our president? The, with the president. Oh, with the president. Yeah, because yeah. they, uh, their or, life does or, suck, or, but they think it's going to be better when they die, so that helps them get through now. Or how they cope with the president. That'd be yeah, thing. or the president. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I just, uh, so I mean, I wish I had, I, I, in a way, I wish I were dumb enough to believe in God. You know, I mean, I, it's not that I, somebody said to me, do you believe in God? And I said, no, but I believe in science. And that's the same thing. You know, that that uh, science is this, I mean, when you think of the universe, when you think of the human body and the way it is created, you know, two people fucked and the, the egg meets the, and then finally this thing comes out and everything is in the right place, hopefully, you know? Uh, this incredible skeletal system and the pancreas and the stomach and the, the bowels and this whole working apparatus. And you have to say to yourself, something, somewhere created that. You know, it just didn't happen by accident. It didn't even happen by evolution because even the first men to walk the earth had stomachs and pancreases and things like that. They just didn't have the brains we have today. Uh, so you've got to w look at that with great wonder. And then where do you, where do you put that uh, as a, as a uh, uh, you know, and you have to kind of write it off to science. So what is God? God is science. You know, it's all the answer. It's all those mysterious things that are so complicated that we can't create them. We can't create basically a human being other than by something like in vitro fertilization or something like that but but after that the process of of creation uh, goes into effect anyway it's not like we created it mm -hmm. so uh you know uh, so how can you you can deny a god because i don't like that concept of a person but you can say science is is the God is God. You know, that is the... Per Does that make sense to you? Yeah, but uh, it just... Uh, I don't... It'd be nice to know all these answers, but we never will. What I don't like about God is everybody uses him as an excuse for their bad behavior. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to war for God and country. I, nothing... Uh, I, more people have been killed in the name of religion, I think, than anything. Yeah. Religion's a horrible, horrible thing. It really is. It's done much more harm than good. Yeah. Uh, what were you raised? Uh, kind of like Episcopal, which is kind of kind of like Catholic light. I, 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 there's some of those religions I don't even know what they are, like Episcopal or Lutheran or uh, you know what I call the the, the nether religions. You know, I can. I know what a Catholic is. I know what a Jew is. I know what a what a what a Muslim is. You know, I I know all that. But when it gets to the others, it's like somebody decided to invent a church one Sunday. Yeah, yeah I think uh, we were just uh, we were pretty much. It was like the Catholic, but I think Henry the Eighth broke off from the Catholic Church, and that's what that was. Those were the Episcopals, and well, the, I minute. think my parent, my parents are basically atheists. I don't even know why we went. Well, to no, the offshoot by Henry the Eighth was the C of E, the Church of England, mm -hmm. uh, because you know he, and that religion was invented because he wanted to be able to marry Anne Boleyn, right, right. And then once he did, he had buyer's remorse, <laughs> and he chopped her head off. <laughs> In fact, he chopped two of his wives' head off, and I, if I, you know, I wouldn't want to become his wife. Jeez, you know, the more that's, that's actually a good joke. Marriage, or as I call it, buyer's remorse. <laughs> <laughs> Can I use that? You, you go you ahead. It's perfect for great. you. It's perfect for your act. <laughs> I've never, I've never gotten married, or as so as I like to call it, buyer's remorse. Yeah, uh, thank you. You gave me a great joke. Yes, thank you. boy. I, I see. I, I do. I still. I still got it. I can still. You throw still one. got it. This, every now and then, I you know, I'll say something to a comedian, and they go, "Can I use that?" Sure. Yeah. I'm. I'm just a talk show host. I don't do this for a living. You know. Oh man. I, 
you should be on here because San Francisco radio is pretty much just people selling vitamins. It's all commercial stuff. They bought time. <laughs> well, what the, what happened is is that radio stations are at a point where they'll sell time to anybody. Yeah, it's pretty much vitamin people out here. There was KGO is three hours Sunday afternoon of people selling vitamins. Yeah, and and uh, uh, that, that's how these stations make money. They're, they're, radio's in a terrible, terrible place. You know. So it's going to disappear completely. Well, as it, you know, the technology is a great technology. You know, the idea that you can put out a signal and that anybody within the distance of that signal can pick it up is better than the internet where you have bandwidth and like when somebody's listening to you and I talk right now they're using up what we call a stream and so like maybe I can look and I'll have 100, 200 streams listening to me at one time but each of those streams takes up bandwidth whereas in radio everybody is listening to the same stream and and that is the advantage of, of broadcasting. Uh, and that's why it's called broadcasting, because uh, the Internet is narrow casting. Exactly. And uh, uh, so it, it – but, you know, I love radio so much as a medium because of its immediacy. Uh, when you go on the Internet here, you're battling with about 20,000 other amateurs – and uh, I, I just don't find it as satisfying as doing. If somebody tomorrow wanted me to do a radio program, I would do it, even though I know radio is dead, you know? But it was great. Oh, yeah, it was great. But also the people running it today have no history. If I go back to San Francisco, let's say, and I think I was pretty big in San Francisco. You were huge. Yeah, I was huge at one time. If I went back there today, I bet if I walked into KGO and I said, I'm Alex Bennett, they'd go, who? <laughs> because the people there didn't live in San Francisco when I was there. They have no sense of the history of the radio in San Francisco, you know. And I would have to resell myself to them. Here was a great story, though. I almost, I, I, there was a guy that took over KGO in San Francisco. He was program director. And his name was uh, was it was it Terrell Matheny? I think it was his father was either Kevin or he was Terrell, or it was the other way around. But anyway, I used to work with his father in New York at WMCA, and so somebody approached him and said, "Hey, uh, Alex Bennett would love to talk to you, uh, you know, about doing something over there." And he, oh, Alex, he. Uh, yeah, I, I I met up with Alex once when my father was the program director of WMCA, and yeah, Alex is great, and so on. Yeah, I w have him give me a call. So uh, I was getting ready to call him, and he dropped dead. Oh yeah, in, in in his office. In his office, dropped dead. Right. Maybe he heard my name spoken, and that <laughs> killed him. I I have no idea what what that was about. Uh, and so I went, you know. The gods are just not with me. <laughs> not meant to be. Not meant to be. Yeah, otherwise, Once again, that mean god has shown up. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, they fired everybody at KGO, which at one time was the most successful station in San Francisco, number one for 35 years. Yeah. And then they changed... A huge the, signal. And all. Yeah, they changed the method of polling, of, of, of rating. And all of a sudden, they were like down around number eight. Uh, and they started firing everybody on the station. And the great thing about KGO as a station was, of all the stations in the country, it was the only one that didn't take syndicated programming. In other words, they were all local, it was all local. personalities. And, uh, you know, now they've got a bunch of, they went and got, they fired everybody who was costing them money and then hired people who wouldn't cost them anything, you know. The only one they kept because of a long-term contract is Ron Owens. But yeah. He's still there. Yeah, he's still there. Uh, but, uh, you know. Eh, so, uh, anyway, that was uh, the history of my... Uh, at that point, I said, maybe I'll just never go back into radio because the gods don't want me to any longer. 
Uh, well, your fans still want you. I wish you could get back on. Well, you know, you can't make lightning strike twice. If I went back, I did a show in San Francisco. It would never quite be what people remember. It know? wouldn't be the same, but I think it would still be good. Well, you know, uh, I, I don't know if I've got it in me anymore. i, I tell you the truth. I don't know if I'm, you know, just not at that age where I'm working on old tapes and so on and so forth. You don't want to get up at 5 a.m. either. Yeah. Anyway, look, we're running out of time here, but we're going to do it again next week, so there's lots more. We'll have another uplifting session. There's a lot more to talk about. Ladies and gentlemen, the person that is, the legend that is, Larry Bubbles Brown. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, at least the uh, audio uh, went that time. Uh, I don't know what happened. I lost the music. Let me see if I if I've got it now. There we go. And how about the other one? Yeah. Okay. So it, it it works. Now I had to reload the music into this. I have a thing here that I play. I, I use it before we go on the air or when we go on the air, and it it does all these various. Uh, uh, permutations of playing things. I tell it, I, I click a bunch of things in order, and it just, oh, wow. Wow, Brian already? Wow, Brian, you are fast tonight, my friend. Yeah. Yeah, hold on a second. Let me uh, let me uh, just uh, do it. I wasn't even ready for you. Hold on a second. Uh, there we go. See, there he is, driving in his car. No, I'm driving back to the terminal, and then I'll be driving in my van yeah, back to home. Yeah, that's the that's the thing we carry the hearts in and the livers in and the stuff like that, right? And the meds and uh, yeah. aircraft parts, all uh, kinds of shit. Boy, you're the first one out of the box on this deal, uh, which uh, is it's kind of amazing. I general, I've, I've come to understand that 10.30 is generally the time in which you accept calls, so uh, I was... I have a half hour to get back to my uh, workplace, yeah. so I figured. Uh, I'd well, if anybody call. wants to ride along with you, all they need do is dial or call uh, using Skype, the GabNet Live, and uh, you can be a part of the Citizens Panel, which should be uh, uh, coming. We should be getting more callers any moment now. But of course, you're early, uh, which I sooner thank you or for. later. Yeah. Sooner or later, I'd like to follow up on a promise I made to myself and listen to uh, all of the interviews you've done with people for the last uh, few months. <laughs> uh, it just back to back to back. As a matter of fact, I've always thought that could be a possible thing you could do to fill up time on your uh, 24-7 uh, website. Just have the uh, just interviews. run the interviews. For well, like an hour. Listen, just for like it, an hour it, or two it, hours it, or if, whatever. If you want to, we'll do that. Because uh, you, it, it, uh, nobody listens to that fucking 24-7 feed anyway because we have so many other ways that they can listen uh, to, the, uh, uh, to, the, to the program. You know, they can go to the on-demand. They can, uh, there are any number of yeah. different ways that they can watch it, you know, watch the video of it and so on so that a lot of people don't even use uh, the 24-7, and the only reason I run it is that's where we go out live every night. So I just keep it, it doesn't hurt to keep it filled with stuff all day long. And here, there's Jeff, and uh, we're being joined now by Rob Alfano. He now looks like he's in his studio, which is nice. And then we're going to go to Mike. Uh, he's calling. Boy, we're filling up fast tonight. Yeah, I had a little problem earlier. <laughs> I don't know what it is. This this thing I've got, which is uh, it's uh, it's called Soundbite, and it uh, I put all these different audio things in there, like the promos and things like that, and then I click on one, and then I click on all the ones I want coming up after it, and I just sit back with my finger up my ass and let it play, but it got to the theme, and all of a sudden it didn't play anything, and somehow it had lost wherever the theme was, or the theme wasn't where it was supposed to be, and anyway, so but now I'm okay. So, hello everybody, yeah. how you doing? Hello. Huh? Yeah, let me wave at him. Anyway, what? Yeah. Okay. Well. Goddamn. What? 
Who are you talking to? I'm not talking to anybody in particular. I'm waiting for somebody oh. to start speaking. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I'll Why should I have to work too hard? You know, you know Alex, I know with Rob now since he set up the studio. He sounds great. Oh, he does. Oh, that's where yeah, he does, that. that's where he, he does all you know, the Mike, Rob would sound good with two cups and a string. Yeah, oh. yeah no, Rob, sounds, it's true, it's true. Rob has you know, one of those. He sounds a lot better than you do. What? Rob sounds a hell of a lot better than Phil. Well, Phil is I'm in not a, a pro. He's not a pro, but uh, Rob is. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's he's the voice of Gabnet. And once again... And in, the in, and in the interest of objectivity, Mike, you're only saying that because you're biased... As am I, uh, left of center. <laughs> yes. No comments. I don't. I don't know what that has to do with it. Phil is not an well, announcer. Yeah. 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 You know. Uh, well, it, it had nothing to do with both and, and elements. He, and, one being no comment, and the other. And neither am I, to be honest with you. I mean, because because Rob does promos. I mean, that's the stuff he enjoys doing, and he's a voice. Uh, I'm not a voice. In fact. I had a better voice years ago because I was too well trained and I and I played it down. I kind of gave it character so that I could do talk shows and, and be a personality on radio. But if you're if you have one of these wonderful voices like this, I mean I'm not saying that that's Rob's problem, uh, but but when you have a really good voice, um, you don't sound like a normal human being. But you practice yeah. that. And you and I, no, I had to. I had to play my voice down. I had to, like, you know, make put little cracks in it when I would talk and things like that. You know, you, you know what I'm talking about, Rob. Well, you, yeah, you're doing a talk show, and and today's different anyway. Today, you know, you listen to some of the people, especially local sports talk, yeah. and they talk like this. Yeah, <laughs> the Mets <laughs> last night. I can't believe it. You never would get a job well, like that back well, in the day. Well, in New York, though, you get away with it, you know. Yeah, well, but that's it. You're not going to what? You won't play in Peoria. No, it wouldn't play in Peoria. There's no question about that. It would not it's play. Easy. It yeah, would the, not the play mid, in Peoria. The Midwest accent is what the you know most of these newscasters and broadcasters want. Yeah. <laughs> There's a, a guy on in New York. I don't know if, if any of you, uh, you know, I know you're from New Jersey, um, uh, Jeff. But uh, if you listen to WFAN, there's a guy on in the middays, Joe Beningo. Yeah. And Joe yeah. does a commercial for, and he is a Connecticut School of Broadcasting right. uh, graduate. From the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. And he's going on. <laughs> they used to teach us how to speak. Yeah, you know. Now they years don't. Years ago in New York, uh, and I may have mentioned this in the past, there was a uh, company called JGE Appliances, and the guy who owned it used to do his own yeah. commercials. Oh, I remember him. I remember. I remember and he would he would say, "Yeah, show your union card at the door, yep. and we got prices so cheap you think they fell off the back of the truck." <laughs> it's like the guy who does the Zipa commercials. Have you yeah. heard those? Ah, no. Right. The worst. Oh, my God. You, those are well, you, you know what I hated? They, it, when they first, they don't ha even have them in cabs anymore. They used to have them in cabs. When you would get into cabs about, oh, this is 15 years ago, they, they suddenly got technologically proficient. And as soon as the meter went down, a voice came on and said, welcome to our cab, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Except the I voice they had was some woman, they, there was some woman at the Taxi and Limousine Commission that they got to do it. And she was going, welcome to New York. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you enjoy your ride in the car. You know, and then at the end, said, don't forget to take your belongings with you. Well, they didn't like that because she had too much of an accent. And I thought, what a great way to arrive at New York and hear that voice, right? Yeah, cool. but exactly. it's, it's a flavor. So they went out and then it became, hi, this is Judge Judy. Welcome to our cab. You know, and they hired a bunch of personalities to yeah. do it. Yes, yeah. Jeff. Yeah, well, my, my first uh, wife yeah. was from Brooklyn. And that's exactly the way she talks. Yeah. And she still talks that yeah. way. 
yeah. yeah. When Jeff, all the character Jeff, left yeah, the Jeff, fra it frame your face, Jeff, so we can see the whole face. Before it was like you were looking like Kilroy. Yeah. Yes. With the, hmm. How's that? Yeah. Remember the old days of the subways when you'd hear. <laughs> right. Oh, you Today, still you still do. Forty second Street, Times Square. Well, yeah. do you know it's, she it's worked? The character's gone. Do you know the woman worked at Sirius who does that? Oh, was that right? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. She worked at Sirius. Uh, Albert oh. knew her. And huh. there were two. There are two voices. There's a is woman. That Susan Berkeley. A, I don't know what her name is, but uh, it, there was a woman that did it, and then there's a guy. And the guy gives you the, make sure you hold on to your belongings, you know, or if you see anything strange, tell somebody, right? Yeah. And then there's the woman going, 34th Street, next stop. Yeah. Yeah, and that was her. You know, so. Yes, Mike. I noticed uh, the Amtrak station here in Sacramento, they used to have an automatic voice. And every once in a while, I don't know what happens to that tape, I was in sight. Somebody goes goes up to the counter and goes, Somebody kicked that machine. Oh, in oh, gear oh well, or it's still on the trains here, on the subway trains, it's still. <laughs> when, it's the, exactly. when it's the conductor who decides he has to make an announcement, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, it used to be that the conductor made all the announcements. So the uh, guy was running the train, and yeah. it was up to him whether he wanted to do it or not. Yeah. And so in some trains, you never heard anything, you know. And other times, you, you, there was one guy you would get, and he was really lucky. And um, he said uh, something like, I remember there was one station where uh, uh, but something didn't happen. It just, it was a station, and it didn't go anywhere. And it said, blah, 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 blah. And for no particular reason, he would say, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And he, so he was very funny. He was funny all the way along. Here we are, 42nd Street. You can get anywhere from here, you know. <laughs> so I mean, it, he was he was fun. And then I think he quit or something or retired, and it, it, it was back to some guy who didn't want to talk to you at all, you know. So even now with Amtrak, hi, I'm Judy. You know, all of us go, oh, shut up, Judy. We're getting so tired of listening. Judy. Well, you know, Somebody please change Judy. At least Judy has at least Judy has a working announcing job. I don't. You know, so I have to hand it to Judy. Because we don't understand you. I go customer service. What? God damn it, give me customer service. Yeah. yeah. Give me customer service. Yeah. Hey, you spent your day, Mike, talking to uh, uh, recordings that, that answer no. your... <laughs> no. No. Look, we always talk to well, things... My, philo my philosophy is if you're going to make me uh, listen to a recording, at least, uh, or interact with machines, it better be, uh, uh, you know, on a 1-900 number, and I'm willing to pay 90 cents a minute just to get an arousal. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. When I call up one of those things... Uh, if you you know, say I want to speak with an advisor or you know give me a real person, uh, it, it keeps putting you through a bunch of crap. But if you go, yeah. oh, how's it going? And you do that three times, then it's uh -huh. through to an advisor. Yep. Or just keep saying customer service; it'll eventually get you there. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever question they ask, Bill, say customer service, customer service, customer service. Bill has a point though, because if you, I've noticed on some, some not all of these services, but some of these automated services, if you speak incoherently, they get you to customer service faster than if you just say customer. Service. Yeah, yeah. It, it's three yep. attempts and you're in uh, uh, yep. with uh, with that kind of unintelligible voice. Yeah. Now I hate. Uh, well, I, I, you know, I dread. Uh, having to go and go to customer service with any company. Some of them are very good. Some of them pick up really fast, and you have to hand it to them because the company sees the value in customer support. And, but other companies, I mean, like Fios, you could wait on the line for 20 minutes. Yeah, you know. like that too. You're better off with the chat a lot of times. Yeah, I, I've, I've, websites. I've tried that, but... If you get somebody really good, you're okay. If you get somebody, 
who isn't yeah, so good. You, 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 once you put you through their paces. Sometimes yeah. I do both. You know, they're cutting and pasting yeah. answers from the from the manual on their yeah, screen. You could, Rob. But yeah, you sure. Sometimes I'm on. Sometimes I'll call, and yeah. it says ah. you know longer than expected hold times. So then I go online and I. While you're waiting so on I the can, call. yeah, if I could get the help, then I great. Do, and then yeah. I hang up. If same not, thing I do. Yep, I think a lot of people do that. You're sitting in front of your. A lot computer. of times you can solve the problem by the time they answer the phone. By the way, yeah. you know the thing you can't do. Uh, you can't tell somebody to go fuck themselves. Uh, <laughs> it, what happened was uh, occasionally, you know, occasionally I will get a call from somebody, from from somebody, who uh, who's you know they're selling something and it's a recording and it says you know like do you want your student loan uh, taken care of right I'm going me student loan what. And I go, press one if you want more details. So I press one for the fuck of it, since I have nothing else to do with my boring life. And I want to make this somebody else's boring life a little exciting. Okay? So then the person comes on and says, yes, you'd like information about, you know, student loans? And I go, why are you calling me? I'm, not, I'm 77 years old. Click. Yeah, they don't even go say goodbye. You so you I don't do get any thing. satisfaction yeah. by even telling them to go fuck themselves. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. Because <laughs> they guy, know that's what you're going to do. I so they guy, beat you to the punch. Yeah. I had a guy the other day. Mr. Allen, are you from California? I go, yes. Fuck you. They hung up on me. <laughs> well, excuse me for being alive. Uh, <laughs> I didn't say you were from California. I said are you from Sacramento before I did that. <laughs> one time, one time, I actually said to somebody when I got a human being, I said, uh, "Why are you calling me? I mean, I, I'm not. I'm on a uh, do not call list." And he said, "Fuck you." What? Yes. Well, I've had a couple of those too. Yeah. yeah. Fuck you. And I've <laughs> had them actually, shit. I've yeah. had him actually call me back and say. <laughs> Really? You yeah. had them call you back? I, I yeah, because I told them to fuck whistle. off. Wait, did did you you Larry David line. It like three times one time, and there's one guy trying to sell a solar thing or something. Yeah. Did you report them? Me. Huh? Did you report them? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, I did report them. Hold on a second. Yeah. Phil has his story to tell. Go ahead, Phil. Uh, yeah, uh, I was getting called by, you know, this is Microsoft. We're here to uh, fix your computer. Yeah. And... Uh, so uh, this this poor Indian guy, I ripped into him like no one's ever ripped into somebody before. Then I, I have a cop oh, whistle. I blew it in his wait ear. Minute, wait a minute. That was the one I got the fuck you on was the guy who called me up and said, you know, your, your machine, your computer is vulnerable because we're looking at it right now. And I yeah. said to him, okay, what's my IP address? Well, and he went, fuck you. <laughs> That's what he <laughs> yeah, They had me on auto dial. You know, I get up at 4.30 in the morning anyway, or at least the alarm goes off. So it's not like uh, the guy was waking yeah. me up. But he was calling me. I was getting called every 10 minutes uh, between like 4 and 5 in the morning uh, uh, for, for a couple of weeks. And I, I know it was this guy because I, I just I lit into him. And it was probably just automatically calling, and there was nobody there if you answered the uh, thing. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but you know, I, I have a high end. I have a similar story. I have, wait a minute, I have a high end, and I have True Caller. Yeah. I have both I'm, of them doing double duty. And uh, what's great about those, and, and Rob turned us on to them, was is that uh, it, it, you don't answer the phone, so therefore it kind of registers like, well, this number isn't a working number, or don't call this person, he's not answering the phone. So it's good when you at least get the idea most of the time that it's a that it's a, a, a scam call. You know. Yeah. you got to keep up with that, Haya, every day. Otherwise, some of them will slip through. Yeah. Uh, you have you to. You well, have plus, to, I, got a similar, I got a similar story to Phil's, though. Okay, what? Yeah, it's an Indian woman who called me and said that the, my computer was all screwed up, uh, and uh, I just got played around, played around with her for a little while. I said, "Okay, what do you want me to do?" And I, she, you know, she says, "Get on your computer," and I, I get on my computer and uh, go on uh, and do this and do that. And before she can, uh, you know, get any vital information from me, I say, uh, uh, "Here's the deal, lady. You need to learn to speak better English and go fuck yourself." And then I hung up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I had a company call me up at 5 in the morning. Are you having back problems? 
Uh, you know what time it is? Oh, it's 8 o'clock. Fuck you. I'm not called up just, well, same to you. <laughs> so, and, and, and you were talking to your mother. <laughs> you got to I mean, use Larry. I, I hate, you I, hate use... These people. I hate these people calling me. Do you have back problems? Or you need a back brace? No. Mike, you should have said, I, no, but I've got a pain in my ass. And guess who it is? You, <laughs> motherfucker. Goodbye. Click. <laughs> That's a good one. You, you feel free to use that if you want, Mike. Next time you get a call All like right, that. Thank you, I will. <laughs> I'll answer. Good morning. Yeah, let city. us know how it goes. <laughs> good morning. This is City Morgue. We stab him. We, we slap him. Click. Yeah, well, you yeah, know that's uh, that's uh, that's the way life goes, I guess, uh, in this wonderful technological age, where uh, it's like digital, uh, what is it? digital cutthroat day and age, as I like to call it. I, I never thought that, you know. I mean, as I as I've often said on this program, I I had this dream when I was a kid that I would be able to. Uh, uh, live in the future where things I was hoping I would live this long so I would see all this stuff and I see all this stuff and uh, it's ridiculous you know it is yeah, just have, absolutely ridiculous Alex I have wet dreams well Alex I have wet dreams too and then I wake up and realize who I fucked <laughs> oh jeez <laughs> or got fucked by <laughs> Um, See, I don't, there's another thing I disagree with you on, Alex, about Bill Maher, who laughs at his own jokes. I, I, I don't. I, I like that. Because, number one, I think it's human for yeah. people who do that, and I myself am one of them. And yeah. the other thing is, it's like a litmus test because if you aren't going to laugh at your own fucking joke, how do you expect anybody else to? Right now, I have a way that I can stop laughing at my own jokes because all I got to do is is make a joke and 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 do this. This way, I get everybody to laugh, <laughs> you know, or at least clap. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, so I, I just uh, realized that my my camera was frozen, uh, and I just unfroze. I thought that was me. I, you know, I'm just as I say, just another one of the technical problems that pissed me off. So you know, what the yeah. hell, you know? Hey, how, hey, talking about technical problems, Rob. How did it work out last night with those cables? I was up till about 4:30 in the morning here. Uh -huh. and I got, I got, uh, I got everything hooked up. The only thing that's again that's not hooked up at this point is the computer that I do all the editing on and all my sound is on. And until I get that bracket, I don't have any place to prop up monitors. Right. Did so. you uh, did you hook up the Nano Patch the way I told yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it works great. Everything is uh, everything is done. The, the studio is. Is I mean it's still a mess here. I mean I still got shit all over the place, but it's working. It's yeah, all yeah. functional. Even when mine is done, I still have shit all over the place. Yeah, well, I want to keep it nice. I like when the studio is nice and clean. Yeah. Well, I mean that that happens. Organized. You know. Yours is organized. Alex's studio is very organized. Oh yeah, sure. No, oh, I think it is. If you looked underneath here. Well, wires, I mean, you know, well, no, I'm, I'm not talking I, about that. I'm telling you, well, it's not that organized. I mean, look, I mean, if I if I, 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 I could take the camera off and everything and show you, but I've just got stuff everywhere. Look, rubber bands. Uh, you never know when you're going to need a rubber band. Yeah. You know. Uh, <laughs> to remind yourself of something. I have a whole bunch of pills back here. Uh, it it's not as as neat and wonderful as you would think. It's it's. Oh, it, rubber bands are a good way for men to stay hard too. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's use toilet so paper. Well? <laughs> le, le, le. <laughs> I I there's something about Brian I just right absolutely there. adore. You know, yeah. I mean. Uh, uh, Poor Amy was pleading with him last night. Really? About Please, what? I, I have to. I'm going to. Yeah, be you know what? And you know what? They, they're going to find if they if they really want to dig shit on her, they're going to find stuff on this program and make it look like uh, make it look like it falls on her. Oh, anyhow. Wait a minute. So, wait, 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 you know wait, what? Wait, Either wait. own up to it and admit that you're a human being who doesn't walk with a wooden board well, up your ass like a typical politician well, 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 tries wait, to wait, pretend wait, wait a minute, tell, or, tell, you know, get out of the game. Tell me what went on. I, didn't, I wasn't listening. 
it's been going on for a while, but well, yeah, Rob can well, go yeah, I, I got mean, I got to punch it, out anyway, so. Yeah. It was just, uh, you know, <laughs> just being himself. Yeah. And Amy was like, just, you know, you know there was a, in the middle of a discussion, and, and uh, Amy was just, you know, I, I'm running, you know, for, what, she's running for council, like city council or something? Yeah. Uh, 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 um, some administrative. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and, and work or something. And she was like, oh, you know, you know, this can come back and bite me. And she well, then I, what I would say that. is she should leave that her show political. until she's through running. Yeah. You know, yeah, her, exactly. her political position in Texas will bite her because I told her that she should run as a Republican and then maybe she'd get elected. Just <laughs> yeah. like in Pittsburgh, you have to run as a Democrat. To get elected, if you're, if you're well, she's running. She's ideas. not. She's not she's running for. California. She's not run, yeah. What is she? She's running for treasurer of a county or no, something like uh, that. And it's uh, something. Oh, like that. Clerk. Some clerk. clerk. Yeah. Yeah, that was a clerk. Yeah. That's a marriage licenses and that kind of stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. clerk. Boy, and that's uh, elected. Well, you know, if if you're afraid, Amy, of of the heat you're going to get because of what other people on the show you're on say. Then I would say you probably should go off the air until the you know not be on the show until the election is over with. You know, a lot of uh, people who run for office uh, do that. You know, whether especially if they're newscasters and you know, uh, and so many people are supposed to because uh, it doesn't count here. We're the internet. Who the fuck's yeah. listening anyway? Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's the internet. But on a b regular broadcasting, if you decide you want to run for office. You have to leave your show. You can't continue to do it uh, because, yeah, and, and it isn't, and it up. isn't because there's a law saying you have to. What the law says it's is that you have to give system. every other candidate an equal it's opportunity. Fair. Yeah, it's fair political practice. Right? Yeah, fair political practice. So that would be good for the show. Hmm? <laughs> that would be good for her. No, show. no, it wouldn't be because then we'd have. It wouldn't be good for our our station. Because we'd have all these other doofuses who were running for county clerk, you know, <laughs> a, a, a thankless job that nobody wants except Amy. I now, Rob's the one. Rob, really you brought it up, so I wasn't going to bring it up about what she said yesterday, but you know, Rob yeah. brought it up, and well, now it's out in the open. So, yeah. what were you going to say? What were you saying, Jeff? I wonder how many competitors are going who are trying to get that job. I think she said that what it was like two other people, or I thought she said that last night. There were like two or three other people that were competing. Yeah, she well, she's she, she's acting like this is the first step towards the presidency. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, I, it's it's a position. I, I got news she, for her. it's the first step towards dog catcher. You know, it's, it's a position she thinks she can win, and I think that it is important to her her politics. Yeah, that. Uh, that she participated. Uh, but on the other hand, and I, That's I, true. I, I've said, and I don't want to come. I, 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 I like good I, for her. You know? Yeah, I, like I said a, a moment ago. I mean that. If you're sure. really worried about it, Amy, you don't have to be on the air for the next uh, couple of months until the election. You know, I mean, uh, Can but she won her political. But, but I, I'm, I, I don't want to see you trying to stifle Brian because you're running for political office. You know. Well, you know, in, in fairness to, to, to all, it's the least uh, as somebody can do uh, if that is what she feels will help her out. No, but does but everybody not, on the show have to mind their P's and Q's because she's running for political office? Uh, yeah. I would, well, as a person who created this network, I would not want to see yes. that a policy. Okay? I, I you know, uh, I'm, I'm sure that uh, when I want to promote the if i wanted to promote this show to regular broadcasting stations and try and get them to pick it up they might hear brian <laughs> okay well, and uh and and my answer to that is fuck them brian is part of the show i'm sure if we knew we were doing this over broadcasting brian would clean up his act you know on yeah, his own I, the expletives uh you know if you were to make a tape to try to, you know, to unless sell. Unless we were serious, yeah, I would clean up. Yeah, yeah, it would, it would be a good idea if, you know, we left the expletives uh, at home. You know. Well, I mean, uh, I, I, that's why I haven't tried to sell this program to, uh, to uh, <laughs> uh, over-the-air broadcasting. If I did a show, I would do it. As, uh, I wouldn't do this show, 
I would do another one using a citizen panel and and create a whole different existence for that show. Yeah. A little more production. A little pr not production, but producing. A little more producing. A little more produced. But yeah. the the other question is, you know, I've often I'll people be back. Pe be, okay, people have said to me, why don't you uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, uh, put this thing on regular broadcasting, and I said, because regular broadcasting goes uh, to commercial for seven minutes at a time. Mm -hmm. What do we do during that seven minutes? Do we keep talking and then people just join us again? You know what? What? P. Huh? P. Yeah. P. Yeah. Yeah. It's a P break. Yeah. So the question is, what do we do? And uh, I, I don't know what we do. To be honest with you. Pull our thumbs. So, yeah. I. I I keep freezing. I'm going to reboot this thing. I just put in high. What do you Sierra mean? You look fine. Point. You look fine. No, no, but the whole. Uh, well, you're fine. Somebody else picture you're, is freezing. You're going. Yeah, I was you, frozen you, all last night. You're going out I fine. Your audio. You're going out fine. You're you're yeah. clear. You're smooth. Hmm. All right. Yeah, yeah well, that, maybe that, you just have to move the well, mouse. The high Sierra fine. sucks, by the way. That you happened know. to me but, last um, night. I wasn't on High Sierra yet, and I was. Watching the show and everybody was frozen about a half hour back, but I could see everything on uh, Facebook was moving fine. Yeah. So I just hung out. I couldn't see anybody's video. Yeah, I could uh, see it, but it was all frozen. I, I, I loaded it on two computers last night: the mini and the and the um, laptop. Mm. And uh, it took uh, forty-five minutes to an hour, and I had to you know go back and put in a couple of codes and and so forth. But for the most part, it, it wasn't uh, that big of a pain in the ass. And the screen looks nice. I, well, I, I, there's yeah. a, a there's a guy David Cox, who who has like this free internet uh, school where it you know they they talk about all technology stuff and he just sent out an email saying don't upgrade to High Sierra, <laughs> and I and, and I you know I just I don't have a problem with it. It, it, oh. it. I'm not seeing anything spectacular or anything that I, I you gotta have it, but. I'm not having any problems either. Well, the only problem that I'm having is I have some network drives, and they keep I keep losing them. They keep going, oh. disappearing and going away, and I have to re-bring them back in. But I found that with a couple of them, what I've done is I've made them a, given them a static IP address, and they seem to hold. You know. Yeah. So, but you know, I mean, what's going to happen is over the next two, three months, you're going to get one update after another for this yeah. thing as yeah. as as uh, apple fixes it why they can't you know th th there's a there's a there's a window because i know i used to work in the business there's a window of testing where they say okay it's all right we can live with this you mm -hmm. know uh and and i think it's something like five percent problems you mm -hmm. know Mm -hmm. So what happens they, is they then send it out with problems, and then they attempt to solve them after you're using it. Is that in the beta stage? Or That's is in that the beta the stage, and then it's in the final gold, gold, the golden master. They will go for a gold master with 5% problems. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah, uh, that's fair because they're never going to be able to test it until the masses get their hands on it. Yeah, so, and then you're going to find out every problem you could possibly right. have. Yes, Jeff? Yeah, I mean, I'm not that demanding a user, so I just wait, I don't know, six months or something like that until I put something new in, well, I, and then I, I have no problems. Yeah, I saw that it was there. I probably should have waited. All yeah, right. I can't wait. I'm just like, I'm obsessed once I know. I know you want to be there. number one. I have to become a Lightroom uh, beta tester if I want to be able to download the files in my new camera before uh, uh, before they release uh, the uh, camera raw for my camera. So I can't even download my raw files. Uh, and then somebody that I know told me if you if you become a, a beta tester for Lightroom, you know something uh, we're losing we're lose, literally losing audience with this discussion. How could you lose them that quickly? No, really, I notice it. It's good. They're going yeah. down. Yeah, the video, they dumped down about well, five or six back. people. Just, you know, I, I see it happening. I, I can see how many people are listening to the program on audio. You know, I mean, they don't, they don't really give a shit about your camera. Yeah, but I don't know how I'm going to become a beta tester. You know, who do you call? How do you get a hold of the Well, yeah, I was a beta tester many times because uh, uh, a lot of companies knew that I was good at 
pl- really running something through its paces. Yeah. And and if anybody could break the program, it would be me. And uh, and and so I I beta tested some stuff, and if it, it's it, they contact you, they ask you if you want to do it. Yeah. Uh, well, they, if, if you Google it, chances are you'll find how to get into the beta program. Yeah. That's how yeah, I got but, into Apple's beta program, which I dropped out of. Yeah. yeah. But but here in a week, you know, they'll release it. But uh, yeah. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, when is people get a new program i mean uh, uh, this new program is going to be better and better and better as the weeks go on and they keep giving you update after update after update do you know the ios which is the operating system for the iphone and the ipad came out about a week ago do you know there's already mm-hmm. been one upgrade mm-hmm. there's yeah. already been one revision so it, that's how fast they find out that there are problems. And actually, it helped mine because I had a couple of problems, and it helped mine. Yeah. Well, well talk about the hacking. Uh, today I read that California and Wisconsin, were, uh, the elections were mm-hmm. actually uh, influenced or hacked by uh, Russian hackers. Mm-hmm. And uh, so uh, Trump may be right about California uh, going for Hillary when it really uh, was supposed to go for him. And if there was Russian hacking... That's bullshit. Uh, That's bullshit. California would not go for Donald Trump, okay? <laughs> there ain't no way in hell the California... You know, you live in California, Phil. Can you imagine that That's state enough. voting for Donald Trump? Hell no. Phil, what's wrong with you? <laughs> well, he doesn't want to answer that. Well, you know, I mean, the, the thing is that... that you know, I'm sure the Russians had something. Do they have this whole thing with Facebook and Twitter now that uh, the Russians were using Facebook and Twitter and they didn't have to hack it. They could they just used it. Right. And, and they, they were doing something today and they were influencing uh, the uh, they were attempting to influence the elections with that. Yeah. So, you know, maybe they didn't even have to do the basic hacking. They were just getting to all the social media where the where the basic politicking was taking place this time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe they shouldn't allow political uh, ads and political posts on Facebook. Well, then, and then you take the again. It's like me trying to shut Brian up so Amy will be happy, you yeah, know, so they, she can they, get elected, nope. right? It, I and, it, and it's the same reason I didn't take my post down the other day. You know, there's a certain thing called freedom of speech that I believe in explicitly. And uh, you shouldn't take people's posts down because they make political statements. And I don't care if they're fucking Russians. Yeah. You know, don't like it, scroll by. If That's you it. don't want Russians on, wait a minute, if you don't want Russians on Facebook, then block off every other country from being able to use Facebook, at least in this country, have another Facebook in other countries. But don't in this country, you don't have them come and be able to use this. In China, you can't get Facebook. You right. can't get Twitter, okay? So you can block these things. Well, you know, yeah, although Facebook being worldwide certainly has, uh, you know, a well, lot of Well, Facebook has chosen to be worldwide, but if they chose to say, okay, our American Facebook, which is, they have a different server over in other countries doing Facebook, but the server for America stops at the borders. You can't, if you want to post something from England, you can't do it. If you want to post you do, that would never happen, though. No, that would never happen. But I'm saying it can be done. Yes, it could be done. Changes IP address to a different country. Well, yeah, that's true. By the way, IP address, folks, is uh, every computer. See, I have to explain this stuff no, now. But the, uh, Rob have uh, uh, that he uh, pays money for. Uh, no, uh, no. Let, let me finish what I'm saying. I'm trying to explain this to the audience, since there are some people that don't know this stuff. An IP address is, is your address of your computer. When you go online, you get an IP address. Uh, in most cases, you always have the same IP address, but it can, it can change. It can be, uh, there, there's a certain thing as it just being a, a, well, a static IP address, you have the same address, all, but it's like your address, like your phone number, okay? Yeah. And um, so you have an IP address. And people can exploit that IP address. That's why you have, uh, you know, firewalls and things like that. 
Um, and, and what we're talking about when we're talking about IP addresses is, is that, you know, you could block out all the IP addresses from other countries and just say yeah. that Facebook in America is for Americans and that's it. But uh, I don't think Facebook wants to do that because then wow. they'll have to say, we've only got 500,000 people, you know, half a million <laughs> rather than 5 billion or something, you know. Well, yeah. they could have Facebook in, for their own countries. But so they would have that amount of people, just not all communicating together. And, yeah, it wouldn't be and the that same. That would really go far. That would go pretty far towards stopping the communication of terrorists who use these yeah. social media sites uh, to to uh, organize. Well, I see, I see nothing wrong with that. You know, I mean, I don't see that as being stifling free speech or anything else. It is simply saying. This is Facebook America. This is Facebook Spain. This is Facebook Britain. You know, Bob has a way around that. He has a system where he can get an IP address that they think he's in Canada or yeah. in England, and uh, and he pays. What's that thing called? Um, it's a VPN. 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 Yeah. So with a VPN, you could have uh, you know one country if they're staging these attacks, they could use a VPN. Now, to, with the VPN, I'm sure they do because the, they want. Uh, they want secure communication, so I'm sure they're all on VPNs. But making it think that it's an American... Uh, Not necessarily, but they're definitely... Uh, they don't have to make you think it's from... I could I could spoof my address by, by just going on a VPN and selecting Virginia. Hmm. It's just it's not going to be my home IP address. I see. Yeah, but uh, here's the thing. When you, when you use a VPN which allows you to use an IP address in another country. Uh, and you have something, let's say, like Netflix, which when you use it here, you can't use the French Netflix or the British Netflix because it won't let you. But with VPN, will it let you? So I'll tell you what I found. I was on a porn site not too long ago. Oh, really? For anime. I was, okay. I was, just, I was curious about Japanese anime. And um, I, I went on this uh, site and I was looking at these uh, cartoons, you know, anime, uh, but X-rated anime. Yeah. And you click on it and it says not available in your country. Hmm. So I said, hmm, well, I don't have to be from my country. And I selected Japan yeah. and suddenly these things played. Wow. So you can, you could spoo, it's, I do it with baseball. And I'm not. Ste I don't consider it stealing because I'm paying for this package. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to watch the local Orioles broadcast or the local Nationals broadcast when they're playing my team. I want to hear my guys. So, but if I check, if I click to watch the Yankee game, it says, "Sorry, you're blacked out because you're in the area." Well, fuck you. I put it on London, and then nothing's blacked out, so I can watch anything. Okay, so it's just the way, and, and, and you can turn VPN on and off, right? Yes, yes. I don't run VPN uh, all the time, although they say you should, because nothing that you do when you're in a VPN is traceable back to you. So you have complete privacy in a VPN. So that's probably what a lot of these uh, hackers from Russia and what were are the doing is using that a saying? VPN about the VPN and the reason why they recommend them now especially is because of what the Republicans are doing to privacy on the internet they're selling everything so if you want to protect your privacy you get a VPN and you hide okay and are VPNs easy to use absolutely it's just a it's just a I may just try to, it just for the hell of it but I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to do a VPN when I'm broadcasting here right doesn't matter doesn't matter really Really? Once it's on, it's on. I wish. I, the I, company I, wish, I worked for used the VPN, and we that's what we had to yeah. use it for offsite. Yeah. I wish we, I my router supported logging into a VPN, and then I could, then I would not just protect the device, but protect my. I would yeah. everything <laughs> coming and going from the router would be through a, a a secure network. Well, now do you have your FiOS in now? Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and what kind of uh, what kind of bandwidth do you have on that? A hundred and a hundred. Hundred and a hundred. Okay. Yeah. Well, could you have gotten more if you wanted it? Yes. God, I wish it down here. You know, you know what I don't get about Verizon. 
and I find very strange. God, we don't have many people listening tonight. Uh, oh, last anyway. night we had a lot of people, but anyway. Uh, but here, here's my question. Uh, uh, what? I, well, now I forgot what my question was because I'm trying to add a call here. Oh, and we just lost uh, Phil. Where did Phil go? He probably got tired of freezing up. No, yeah. no he said he'd be right back. He'd be right back? Oh, okay. All right. Anyway, hello, Brian. Welcome back. Hello. Uh, uh, no, uh, what I was going to say, yeah, was that I don't, I, I just, you know, I just signed up for Verizon, uh, Fios, and it, uh, you know, it cost me about uh, uh, $230 a month, $233 a month. And I'm, I, I've, it's a hell of a lot cheaper than the uh, 335 I was p paying to Time Warner. And I'm getting so much more for my money, of faster bandwidth and all that. And even channels that uh, I wasn't getting, you wouldn't get with the, uh, with the old system. So anyway, so I, I'm paying this money and I signed up with them and I'm doing my stuff with them and all of that. And let's all say hallelujah, right? I still keep getting letters in the mail. Would you like Fios? Here's a special deal on Fios. And I'm thinking, don't they have somebody there who knows stop sending mail to this guy because we're only wasting our time? We're only wasting yeah, well, they're, postage? They're probably, they're going off of old lists. It's all done through, uh, you know, who knows, six months ago maybe they got oh, data. Well, they, well, to begin with, they put Fios in the building just recently. They completed building it right. and putting it in here. And so everybody, I'm sure, in the building is getting email. But I yeah. mean... I was getting three and four letters a week, yeah. all with the I same quit, offer. I quit, uh, I quit AT and T internet in January of this year, yeah. and I'm still getting. Do you want to join for only thirty bucks? You can join. No, I got rid of you for a fucking reason. Yeah, I just I get it with com crap now. I, I just quit com crap a week ago, and and every two minutes my phone is ringing from yeah. com crap. Yeah, well, I, com crap. I haven't gotten any calls from. Uh, I, 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 I I haven't gotten any calls. Believe it or not, I haven't gotten any calls from uh, uh, from Spectrum or what was Time Warner now Spectrum. I haven't gotten a single call from them. It was like when I finally decided to quit. They spent about up two minutes trying to convince me not to, and then I told them that I did, and that was it. And you know, fuck you. And and all of a sudden, and I was very nice about it. And all of a sudden, the tone changed. You know, it was suddenly a very nasty, curt tone rather than, well, you know, if you're unhappy with Fios eventually, get a hold of us. We'd love to deal, have business with you again. Uh, you know, nothing like that. It was just very curt. And then, hmm. uh, can somebody come and pick up my boxes? No, you have to take them down. Yeah. You know, yeah. so now we're hauling. You need to watch that South Park episode where, uh, where uh, the uh, cable companies tell the uh, the uh, customers, uh, Stan Marsh and all them, that uh, they're the only cable company in town. So they, oh wait, there's no other cable company out there that you can switch to, is there? He takes off his he takes off like the pockets of his shirt and he plays with his nipples. Yeah, you're. You have What 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 what's what, what, what is you uh, just. You Hefner just died, ninety-one. Oh, wow. oh, really? Oh. Yeah. Son yeah, of a bitch. A Son of a bitch. Wow, ninety. I, I think I was wow. wondering when that was going to happen. I mean, you know, Hef was getting along in years. Now, didn't he sell the Playboy Mansion with the caveat that he had to remain living there? Yes, yeah. as long as he was alive. So now they got a room available. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know. Um, they're probably wow. doing a big high five over there, and we got our place completely to ourselves now. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, be good. you know, I there, there was a if you get a chance, if you get uh, who was it? Amazon, I think, did a series on Hugh Hefner and his life, and it's yeah, one of those so lives. It, it's one of those. Of it's one of those lives that when you you know when you just mention Hugh Hefner, you go, ah, Hugh Hefner. When you start adding up all the things he accomplished in his lifetime, you yeah. begin to realize this was maybe one of the most important people of the 20th century. 
yep. uh, 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 that that he 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 changed the entire attitude about sex in this country with Playboy, loosened it up completely, uh, and he fought a lot of good fights. And after it was all over, I went, okay. You know, I mean, and and they kind of ended in about 1985 because about that time Playboy became, you know, kind of not uh, not important right. anymore. But when it yeah. was important, man, he was doing stuff. You know, are they yeah. going to add any more to that series? Because that was a good series. Oh, it probably was a good series. Maybe the funeral. You know. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they, did they, anybody they, else here today? I was on uh, driving around, going t- doing a bunch of errands. Yeah. And this guy that got elected in Alabama, I oh. heard he's here lies a steppy. He was talking about uh, he oh, he equated God. bestiality and homosexuality. Yeah, he's a sheep fucker. Yeah, he's a very conservative uh, uh, guy. Uh, you know, uh, he had he has some very uh, unusual views. Maybe they play well down there. But uh, I, they don't play that ding, 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 ding. It's scary. Me, me, think, me think the lady doth protest too much. It's scary. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. The good news is that Trump's uh, candidate lost, and the bad news is Trump's bad candidate one. lost. You know, I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, this guy is supposedly just scary. Oh, he, listening to his uh, his explanation about about homosexuality and bestiality. Wow. I sit in the car th- thinking, gee, I'm so glad I'm I, my I, age. I, I, let's ask Brian. Brian, you ever fucked a sheep? Because <laughs> Brian, Brian's our go-to wanted, guy, our go-to guy for gay. If I wanted to fuck a sheep, I'd, uh, I'd hit on Phil. Yeah, okay, all right. All right. <laughs> so he used Luber, not it's another story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, think, uh, I think the guy's name is Rory Moore, and he was a judge, wasn't he, with the whole yeah. Raven? He, and he, was, he uh, wasn't out. sparred, but he was, uh, he, he'd run into a number of situations on uh, uh, many of his uh, 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 actions or, uh, you know, his uh, rulings. Uh, closeted cocksucker. That's four case, not three. Yeah. So I can... <laughs> you, oh. you, got, you got a party. Who you got a vice president who will not have dinner with a woman? Eat shit. He got you got you got, you got. This is what your party produces, Phil. How the hell do you get behind that? You know, uh, they're all individuals, and they all individually uh, look at different things the way they want to, and that's what America's all about. Yeah. No. Well, I, I, Phil, I will have to say there the is a bit of a, a difference. You can uh, find you can. You can find the most uh, out there uh, Democrat or lefty, and you're not going to come anywhere to the yeah. nuttiness of this guy. Okay, you, you, we're by contrast find uh, corporatist well, uh, lefty, uh, lefties in name only, yeah. like Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. So, yeah, and I'll do again in the interest of objectivity. You have uh, you have some uh, shady assholes on. On the other side as well, those two being among the the top. top yeah, of the- uh, but beyond those guys, because they're actually fairly reasonable, you, you get uh, you, you get these anti-fada guys. Like you, you who? Get, name uh, one. Name one. Well, they're all in Berkeley and wearing no, black name masks. One. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a But those aren't windows. those aren't people who no, are running people. for the Senate or running for no, 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 public office. People. Who no, but we're, we're, no, but we're no, but no, but we're we're talking. About uh, uh, about people who are running for office, like this guy, who are just absolute lunatics. Oh, absolutely! But who? you get these. What about uh, the guy who uh, Strom Thurmond? Uh, wasn't he a Democrat? No, he was. A, I think he became oh. a Republican. He was a Dixiecrat. He was a Dixiecrat. That was a different time and age. Yes, yeah, a different. You're talking about like uh, another era. Uh, you know, people's more people's. Uh, you know. But, these guys in Alabama, they're living in a different century. You know, uh, you, you, they, they're, you know, they want what they want. They're influenced by their religion and their... But these are, 
elections. These are your Southern Republicans, and that's really but where the stronghold the is. Years ago. The, these are the guys, believe it or not, uh, Phil, these are the guys that Trump plays to. He went down there to politic for this yeah. other guy who was against I'll him. I'll bet, I'll don't, bet, though, don't, I'll don't, bet, though, my left testicle, that, uh, I'll bet my left nut that uh, the, the uh, Alabama as a state could go blue if more people down there, you know, gave a fuck and actually voted. I wonder how many apathetic assholes there are down there who just don't give a shit and uh, won't lift a finger to vote. The guy that Trump supported was more mainstream and 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 didn't have these views that this Judge Roy, uh, whatever. It is. I can believe that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I just yeah. had, I just had somebody ask. Uh, uh, do women ever talk on this program or we people we, younger we, than 50? Uh, no. To begin with, uh, Brian is younger than 50. And we... Uh, and, and almost a woman. Uh, and almost a woman. Uh, he's gay. Yeah, and and, so, with, and if, you would watch, if you would watch the program more often, you would see that we have some women who call on a very regular basis. The woman who's telling you this, Alex, asking you this question, who's under 50... Then maybe she should dial in. Yeah, she's an ex-girlfriend, but uh, you know, uh, she apparently doesn't listen that much and doesn't see Renee and then uh, Charlene and. Uh, well, we don't care if you're freezing up, Phil. But I can't hear what's going on. Oh well, it's it's wonderful. We've been. But anyway, anyway, what I'm trying to say is we we have quite a few women that call this show. I wish we would have more. Uh, but, uh, you know, and, and of course, y you who are complaining never call, so you, that could be another woman here. And so far as age is concerned, uh, what are you, an ageist? I, I believe you're over 50 now. I mean, uh, what, 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 why are you saying, is there anybody younger here? You should be happy that there are a bunch of old people here, because you're getting there. Anyway, I just reamed well. out an ex-girlfriend. <laughs> what the hell? Not anymore. <laughs> Not a, well, she hasn't been for years. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Jeff, who is uh, who is under the age of fifty, by the way, if she's listening. I'm younger. Yeah. Than <laughs> I'm younger. Yeah. Me, I'm. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah. You're in between. Well, don't give a fuck. That's how you know. Just don't give a fuck. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a conservative. No, if I got that from somebody who was 35 and asked that question and was a woman, then I would say, okay, you know, you, you it's worth you asking that question. Uh, but you know, and we do have uh, we we do occasionally we have had people who are much younger. We have yeah, one guy Matt, in his 20s, Paul, huh? Yeah, Matt from Baltimore. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he's like. he's doing some rock and roll thing now, and between his divorce and selling his house and his band, uh, he hasn't uh, been calling in. Yeah, well, Matt, give us a call sometime so I won't get heat from an ex-girlfriend that I don't have any youngin youngins on. Yeah, uh, yeah, whatever. And I'd love to talk to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> oh, he's I always liked uh, Matt a lot, and of course a doc uh, doc in uh, in Australia was younger yeah. much younger uh and doc got married you know i got an invitation to his wedding obviously i, I wasn't going to be able to go sure but that, that jason guy that pussy whipped jason guy who uh who calls in i guess uh he, he would like a, a woman under 35 to call on oh, sure for oh, many uh, reasons uh, uh, um, uh patrick who calls all the time as a regular on the show is uh what 40 Something like that. Yeah, forty-one. Yeah. Yeah, forty-one. Yeah. So we we have do have younger people on the show, and, and Rob well, looks young. And tonight we don't <laughs> tonight we don't have any women, but some nights uh, we have Renee here, and we have Charlene here, and we have uh, uh, Diane we, Diane here. So you know uh, uh, we do. So uh, what, what and I I just thought I would say that to you know yeah argue back with an ex girlfriend. Uh, so, uh, where, where were we? Oh, listen, today uh, uh, we we're missing the big story of the day, of course. You know, and every day the big story of the day has something to do with Donald Trump. And before I do that, let me just say something. I, I, I actually had a pang of sadness today. I met up with one of the guys who works in the building. He's one of the, you know, the uh, 
uh, fix it guys one of the supers he, he's a, he's a under super okay uh and uh he he's, we're going up in the elevator and I said so uh, how's it going he says well not too good he said i can't talk i haven't been able to talk to my parents in puerto rico he ah. said uh, he said i i hear they're okay through other sources but I don't know. I can't talk to them. There's no phone service to Puerto Rico. They're you still 100 percent without power then. Yeah, no, I was. I felt Jesus so bad. Christ. I felt so bad for him. You know, ham operators can uh, patch uh, phone calls, and they can uh, also, uh, you know, relay information. Uh, and and that's what they should set up. These. Uh, oh yeah, these yeah, things. yeah. First, they got to get electricity, Phil. No, no. Uh, you can exactly, Phil. Uh, one thing, Bill. One, during the disaster, where are you going to get electricity to run your station? Well, they, so, they have generators and the the grid oh, there uh, 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 is uh, dilapidated. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you? What are the? What are the? What are the, what are the, what are the generators run on? Uh, fuel. But oh well, there's fuel. a gas shortage down there, Phil. There's a shortage, but they but they are getting it in. What you're and, saying and, is you're asking something to be done that under these conditions is not that easy to do. It's not Nothing easy. Is easy. Nothing, easy. Uh, but it can be done and it can be set up quickly. Yes, Jeff. Oh, yeah. Jeff. Yes, I I uh, listened to uh, my senator from Connecticut, who was uh, talking about uh, Puerto Rico, and he was interviewing uh, and had spoken, who is one of the big generals of the Navy, he's not a general, what's a guy the head of the Navy? Admiral. Admiral. Yeah, Admiral. Commodore. Yeah, one of those guys. Admiral. So he was talking to him, and he said, I have all the equipment. I got the equipment. I've got the men. I've got all the stuff ready to go. All they have to do is tell us to go. Well, aren't they asking for that help? They're no, asking uh, for it, but, but but they're saying nobody's sending it. Uh, how sending do you transport it? I, no, no, no. I saw on tonight's news that those ships are sitting off the coast, and they have helicopters and hospreys that are uh, taking yes. food and water, it, yes. all sorts of supplies and fuel, and bringing it over to the island from the ship. Well, it's it's slow in coming. It's slow in coming. It's been a, it's been a week already, a million Phil. Million people there. Well, well, yeah, it's it's a terrible disaster. I mean, but it's uh, logistically very difficult to logistically. Uh, to do it's this. difficult, but the fact is, they're also Puerto Rican. Uh, you know, that. and and I, the yeah. attitude, the attitude is uh, they're Puerto Rican. Uh, but you we'll know, take care of them. We'll we'll get their electricity brown, on. Not a, white. Yeah, we'll <laughs> get their electricity stuff. on eventually. But they're they're well, Puerto the, Rican after all. I mean, that's yeah, where that attitude's yeah. gonna bite uh, them in the ass. I'm a big I'm a big fan of Jennifer back. Lopez, but they're, they're they're Puerto grid. Rican. Yeah, what? they have a grid, and that grid is in sad shape. And they lost uh, most of their uh, transfer stations for uh, one of those towers. Now the first uh, 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 Hurricane Irma. Uh, didn't do it. Uh, didn't knock those down. But the second one uh, knocked down most of the uh, most of those uh, transmission towers. One hundred percent of that island was without electrical power. Right. That uh, they they to this moment have very little gas at all. So when you when you're talking about it, fire up those ham radios. I'm it, sorry, it, Phil. It ain't that a, easy. On a, on a basis, you can set them in certain places. You can and you can relay. Uh, 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 you got a nodding head up there from Mike. I, I had a friend that did it in in the in the Andes. He went down there. That's in the up, Andes. This is in Puerto Rico. That's under water. Phil, Phil, what are you gonna do? How are you gonna set up a station where you're gonna put up a station in the middle of somewhere where it's water? Where in the hell are you going to set it's, that it's up? It's not water everywhere. Oh, bullshit. Well, you, you're a defeatist, to... Mike. You're a defeatist. Why don't you sit there in your chair and smoke your oh. cigarettes and do nothing? And that's exactly what's you, what you would uh, love them oh, to do. No, 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 they won't. Because, one, where in the hell are you going to set up a station? Two, you cannot send... Amateur radio operators sure. down there without the federal government's approval. Thirty, they're already there. Realize that also. Stop yelling. 
thirty percent of the hospitals. Yes, you are. <laughs> yeah, thirty percent of the hospitals have electricity. Uh, uh, now they may only have it on a, uh, air conditioning on a couple of floors, but thirty percent of the hospitals have electricity. These hospitals could be bases uh, to transfer information and to let people know that the citizens are either alive or not. Yeah, yeah, American Express, <laughs> or your Advantage card. Yeah. So, if you take your American Express to Puerto yeah. Rico, it doesn't work. Because they don't have... Shut uh, it's yeah, shut down. They don't have that means that you can't uh, get a, uh, a cellular service. You can't go to a store. You're, you're totally screwed. You can't yeah. go to the bank to get more money. Yeah. yeah. This is a... Horrible yeah, situation. but any, oh, anyway, but anyway, you, you yeah. can't condemn the government because it's a difficult thing to get this the help in there. They're trying, and isn't you know, isn't is, isn't Trump going to go down there or something? Did yes. he say that? When's he yes. when's he going? Next yeah, week, uh, and exactly how is he going to help? Uh, he's going to uh, bag some. Donate his hairpiece. <laughs> Burn it for fuel. Burn it for yeah, fuel. Uh, I mean, how exactly is he going to help? Well, uh, the whole idea is he's supposed to survey the area, and uh, he's I guess I can't. To, and they're supposed to then disseminate additional help. This is something. Now, if he didn't go, they would say that he doesn't give a shit. Now that he's going, they're saying, "Well, is this just another photo opportunity?" Here, take a run. Uh, by the way, here is yet another old guy. Tim has joined us. We don't know if he's old. Well, we don't see his picture. I, I, pretend, I pretend to be old. <laughs> right. It's the end thing. Yeah. Hey, do you know why he didn't suspend the uh, Jones Act? What's, what's, the, the, Jones what's Act? the Jones Act? The Jones Act says the ships have to come from American port to American port. They can't be flagged in another country. So uh, there's, well, there's, yeah, yeah, I heard that. He said he, that it's because... Well, let me finish, Phil. Phil, let me finish. Yeah. yeah. He, uh, he suspended it for Irma. And he spent it for Harvey, for Florida and Texas, which are land-bound part yeah. of the country, but not for Puerto Rico. Is I think uh, he said, well, he was hearing from a lot of people in the shipping industry. They didn't want it pulled That's back. Right. He was getting a and, lot of... And, wait, wait, let me finish, and then and I'll let you go. Then I also saw somewhere that the McConnell family is making money off of shipping pretty much like... Lyndon Johnson, right? Lyndon Johnson's company was in Seaway Corporation and supplied a lot of supplies to Vietnam. Oh, well, I, I don't, I don't see that. Uh, you know that uh, I can see that the shipping industry is lobbying uh, to uh, to not allow this because they feel that it, maybe it'll cause other problems. There's people dying, Phil, right now. It well, I'm not be... agreeing that it's the right thing to do. They should uh, do all the inspections for the TSA on this side of it, not at the airport down there. They also need to appoint one person, like uh, Honoré or somebody that did Katrina, that can do can 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 cancel almost immediately any rules that getting away saving lives. They need a czar running this operation. You got to remember that 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 uh, uh, Puerto Rico is a U.S. territory. Right. Uh, and uh, they, uh, the but people the, there are considered citizens of the United States. They pay taxes? They pay taxes and everything. The only thing they can't do is they can't vote right. uh, in national elections. They can vote locally. And if, if he doesn't save them, they're going to all come to the uh, urban centers of America. They're going to turn Florida into a blue state. Uh, maybe. Uh, but, no, it's uh, not a maybe. I think it's pretty... Con I, I think at this point they need to come to the states. They need to ferry those people in. There is no infrastructure. Well, they can't get out. But you also got old people that can't move, and they they got to get the hospitals up and going. So well, uh, there'll, be, there'll, there'll be a way to start moving them, whether it's uh, aircraft carriers or. Uh, uh, well, it should have been done a week ago, and uh, one of the congressmen had asked for them to get together all the National Guard from all the 50 states and get National Guard down there. This is a lot bigger crisis than Houston or Florida had. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, uh, and we're it's, not, it's and, and we don't like see Katie. it on the news? No, we didn't what? see it on the news. I don't think the Republicans the, are restricting it. 
you know, if there was a way of making the Republicans look bad, you don't think the news would be uh, broadcasting it? Maybe it's not true. Maybe it's not true that, you know, it just happens to be... Uh, well, no, no, no the, I lay all the blame at the foot of Trump. That's, this is his job. And um, some people think that he didn't even realize for the first couple of days that Puerto Rico was part of the United States. Uh, why, oh. why is the governor of Puerto Rico complimenting Trump and saying that he's getting them the aid, he's getting them all of these no, no, things? No, that's what Trump said. He counted, No, he that, I, heard the, I heard the governor of Puerto Rico this morning uh, on CN, uh, CBS. Uh, I heard that, too. I heard uh, it, too. And, you but, know, but CBS, he has to. What, what else is he going to do? If he doesn't, he's not going to get well, anything. Well, uh, Tim, oh, Tim, cool. Tim, let's be fair for a moment here. You know, you know, you'd love to find everything you can wrong with Donald Trump. I and mean, occasionally he's like a, you know, stop clock. He's right twice a day. Uh, yeah, that's right. You know, that's and, and occasionally uh, he does something right. Now, I, I don't know that he's done that much right because I don't see any real uh, changes in Puerto Rico and, uh, and, and so forth. But on the other hand... Um, uh, you know, he he obviously is 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 doing something proactively to try and help in that situation. So don't sit here putting him down for that. We got a lot of other things we can go after him for. Well, no, well but, but this we need to put the pressure on because there's lives at stake. And I think it was Hillary Clinton that mentioned we should have the uh, the military comforts com comfort USS Comfort. And they finally started moving it, but it's still not going to be there for a week. Yeah, but I mean, you know, in, in a situation like this, it's time to not be political. It's time to be proactive no. and to be right. humanitarian. And, but I think and, that's know. part of those I, ships into harm's way uh, while the hurricane is taking place. They, they no, have, no, no, they're just leaving today. Well, yeah, I think they this is a lot. They three or four days, five days ago. This is a lot like Katrina. There's no money in the area in New Orleans, right? This is a, a poor area. It's what's going on in Puerto Rico? Right. Trump, and what's going on in Puerto Rico is the same thing. They've been in 11 years of a recession. There's lots and lots of debt. Uh, Trump, so there's, uh, there's so there's not a lot of push to get in there. It seems. Trump well, committed one billion dollars right off the bat uh, for immediate aid. Uh, uh, last week. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I don't think I don't think he's handled it badly. I'll tell you where he handled it badly. Okay, is that he spent all his time yelling at the NFL and not yelling about Puerto Rico? You know that yeah, the things that true. really counted, he didn't. He wasn't dealing with what he was dealing with. Were all these things he sets up as a diversion, so you won't notice the shit he's doing. You know. Yeah, he and, also took media time away. Because of all this stupid tweeting, exactly. for, the, for one week he should have stopped all this. Exactly, but he, but he, he you know, uh, he he should have been all that effort that he was using. Oh, by the way, uh, for that person who wrote on our page about women, here comes uh, here comes Renee. Uh, so um, yeah, so uh, and 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 she she is with vagina, so you know she is part of the female race. Yes, uh, yes, Renee. Yeah, and I still have my whole, th all my plumbing so working. Yeah. Um, I was saying to you, I saw Colin earlier, but I was taking the high road from Kona through Waimea back home. Uh -huh. So I, it was, if you thought, Phil, if you had to hang up because your connection was shoddy, you would have not been happy with mine, that's for sure. <laughs> Brian, you cracked me up, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, but uh, you know, so, whatever. Are you part of the United States? <laughs> no, uh -huh. no, no, not a. Sorry, no. Jeff Sessions. And proud of, and, and proud of it. <laughs> Damn right they and they are too, boy. If you talk uh, to them, well, it they wasn't are. a state of the union in, uh, during Pearl Harbor, but you know, FDR and that administration did more for Hawaii than uh, <laughs> as a territory than. Uh, Trump and his cronies ever did. Yeah. Well, actually, so let's let's go back to Puerto Rico for a second. But I'm kind of pissed off because President Obama did squat for the state of Hawaii while he was in charge, and and that was wrong because he a lot. Of he's got all there. too. Don't get me wrong. Hey, hey, he spent his travel dollars in Hawaii. Okay, so. Um, when George Bush was president, he sent a shitload of money to the crap-ass state of Texas, 
And I have no idea why Obama didn't do the same thing for the state of Ohio. And we can say that's true for almost every president. Their home state actually gets some sort of benefit by them being the whatever of the home state. But Except New York and, and Trump because it's costing them a fortune oh, yeah. to have Trump Tower there and all the security and everything else. So about Puerto Rico. He's sending them bagels. Yeah, about Puerto Rico. There's two things that are ha that should be happening that aren't happening, and one is all of the cruise companies, cruise ship companies, should have boats there. Really, they should. I think they a should. lot of them do, and no, uh, they don't. Uh, I and that's the I think, one, I think one cruise line. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. The, the owners of uh, Carnival Cruise gave up their U.S. citizenship. So they wouldn't have to pay taxes. Well, so no, wait, wait, right. yeah, but again, yeah, you're getting political in a case where I think in the case of I maybe have been Carnival Cruises uh, 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 loaded up their boat with a lot of Puerto Ricans to take them back to Florida. So, yeah. 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 So you know, I mean, so, let's let's, uh, let's so uh, you know was, we we hate it when people get there. when p people politicize tragedy, and I think it's just as bad when you use uh, tragedy to politicize. See, well, they, they, they couldn't get lights out. And so what Carnival or, or that cruise line did was it took many, many people that couldn't get flights out because of the airport being closed right. and then transported them back to the States. Yeah, so look at this. Don't hold on two seconds. So, number one, those weren't Puerto Rican citizens that, that have been flown off or voted no, off. No, these, the these are American nationals that were stuck. Exactly. So what have we done for the Puerto Rican Americans that are there? Pretty much squat. Well, but yeah, but, but, but we're not. It's, what we're not going to do is we're not going to boat lift uh, every Puerto Rican to the United States because they don't want to leave no. either. They want to stay in their own homeland and and rebuild their homes. But they need the you money have, and the and the ability to do that. Now you need a, you can have cruise ships parked right out there, and they could be living out of the cruise ships until America pulls its ass out of their head, which is one thing. You know, a cruise <laughs> ship holds three thousand feet. Good luck with that. A, a cruise no, ship holds no, three thousand. Renee, no, oh, no, cruise no, ships no, about no. three thousand people, and how no. many millions of people are uh, uh, in Puerto Rico right now? I don't know how many That's, millions of people are. I, in I think. Rico. Listen, uh, uh, in all deference, uh, Renee. I do think the fact that if it, it, it we and it, I think it was Carnival Cruises, but whatever the cruise company was, if they were taking Americans who had been caught unawares there uh, because they were on vacation and whatever, and are boat lifting them back to the United States, I think that's that's appropriate. There's no no way they could take the average Puerto Rican or take the Puerto Rican populace, throw them on the boat, and take them back to to Florida. And in most cases, they wouldn't want to go anyway. I'm not saying taking them back. I'm saying park the ships there and leave them there until the United States government gets their shit together. Number two on this particular point in time, those ships run off of diesel fuel. There is no reason they can't be offloading some of that diesel to be used on the island. They're not using it. Uh, yeah. They, they also need uh, quarters for the workers that are going to do the repair work. So they did that for in uh, in Katrina. They used a carnival Absolutely. cruise ship. Right. I don't know if it was carnival or not, but they did. But yep. Did you know that? Did you know the story behind that? Jeb Bush tried to get a tax exemption so they didn't have to pay tax on the right. money they made housing people because uh, Car Carnival Cruise Lines usually doesn't pay U.S. tax. We, we've and seen And they're going to get stuck paying it there. There's no reason not to be utilizing it. And these ships, and this is what we're going from summer or summer to winter. So these ships are repositioning themselves across the entire planet. And some of those ships are about to take offline. There's no reason you can't park a ship outside of Puerto Rico and house people until the American government gets their shit together. Three There's no people a ship. It's not 3,000 people a ship. Quite frankly, I think what we're doing is we are uh, uh, kind of a, a, a Monday morning quarterbacking the situation where we don't know the realities, to be honest with you. You know, it's I mean, we're, we're just sitting here. We're just sitting here hypothesizing about what the yeah. ship should do or shouldn't do. But the realities are entirely different. I mean, uh, you don't even know how close these ships could get to port. Or if they need to be, if they need to be, uh, you know, you got to take. 
I've I've been to many islands where where the ships can't get that close. They have to be moored, and then you're taking those those boats back and forth all day. So right. there are all kinds of logistics that go along with that. Puerto Rico has a pretty decent size port. You know, the, but, they, but they can use the the, the normal load docks because there's no industry right now, so they can they can also use those. I was in Cozumel right at, uh, one month after Hurricane Wilma, and uh, when I when I uh, and I and I the uh, ship pier was completely destroyed. Uh, where, uh, you know, you couldn't get the strips uh, ships in there. Now they rebuilt within a few months, but uh, still, uh, those hurricanes just, just destroy those things. So if you, if you don't have a pier for a ship to pull up to, and all you have is debris and stuff like that, I mean, yeah, you're right. You can't bring them in. Is you, a hey, Bill, you know about the golf course that Trump had in uh, Puerto Rico, don't you? No, here we go again. More politics about Trump, Tim. Well, I don't know. No, it's just he went. It went bankrupt, and he he he. Uh, well, what is that? What is that? him on municipal bonds for millions. Well, what of does this have to do with what we're talking about, though, Tim? You you just go sideways to try and swipe well, Trump. Well, because because Trump keeps talking about you know, and, and believe me, I'm the first one who wants to put down Trump. But let's not go sideways to try and take a swipe at him, Jeff. No, no, no. I just want everybody to know yeah. that he he was part of that debt. Yeah. From the uh, yeah. golf course. Yeah. All. One thing I, I asked my wife uh, this morning, I said, uh, why don't we send some money to Puerto Rico? And she goes, I already did it. Uh-huh. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who do you send it to? What, the Red Cross? Or? Yeah, do, do not send clothing. Do not send toys no. for kids or anything like that. Those things, uh, I, I saw a whole thing on it one Sunday morning on CBS Sunday morning about how when we do this, we simply wind up <clears throat> creating a mountain of rags. You know, that money, you send money to the proper agencies and let them do with the money what they have to do, yeah. you know. You can easily look on the Internet and it'll tell you who the, the most uh, successful uh, uh, so, organizations. Uh, from, from work that uh, my friends did during uh, uh, other earthquakes and calamities, that the Catholic uh, Church Services uh, is probably uh, the number one uh, nope. provider of aid. You're saying during, Catholic uh, Charities? Is that nope. what you mean? Ca- no, Catholic Church Services is uh, yeah. are the number one provider of AIDS during disasters. And then the German government is also very active yeah. in providing. Where, where does the Red Cross fit into all of this? Uh, I don't know. Because mm-hmm. they've been given a bad, bad... Yeah, well, I've always had somewhat of a bad rap with them. Mm-hmm. However, my my sister in law is involved in that, and she just came back from Texas. She was there feeding people for probably three month, uh, three weeks. Yeah, just feeding people. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you. Uh, I'll tell you what happened. Because they didn't have a house. Anymore. Yeah. What happened no. um, when I when I went through the earthquake in San Francisco? The Red Cross was there. They were there yeah. doing their stuff. You know. So I've always been somewhat fond of the Red Cross because of that. I don't know how they how good they are now. This is now how many years later since the San Francisco earthquake? But back no. then they were pretty. They were. They were. They were. They were, they were the ones who were there first. Well, you know, a lot of times when there's a fire and uh, in the middle of the night and, and 50 families are displaced, the Red Cross are there to help, not only with just coffee and donuts, but also to blankets and uh, to uh, to get the people into temporary housing. Yeah. Uh, Jeff? Uh, I heard an advertisement for them this morning, and what they asked for is for $10 per yeah. person. Well, if, if they could get everybody in America to send ten bucks, they'd have a lot of money. I know. You know, but I think the bad rap on them is they go, "I sent money during the San Francisco earthquake, and the money never went to the earthquake, but it went to something else." In other I mean, words, when they do money collection, it goes into a big <clears throat> pot, and then so you've got you know Hurricane Harvey, and then it's followed by Hurricane Irene. Uh, was it Irene? Was the and, next one? And they, yeah, they have other things. You know, they do. and they, 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 you know, they go. They, 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 it's a pot they pick from to just do stuff with. Yes, Renee. So when you donate to these groups, you can designate what d- disaster it goes to. 
so it doesn't go into a pot. You, yes. Number two. So the other issue with this is, Phil, there are uh, there are at least five to five to ten ships that carry more than three thousand passengers. Sure. There are there are less than ten ships or less than ten ships that carry between two thousand, and then there's the ultra classes that carry. Like nine hundred forty-nine. So yeah, so you average it out. If you got enough ships there, it's three thousand a ship. Some have ten thousand yeah. people. Some have fifteen. You know, uh, I have to say one thing. I have to say one thing. That when it looked like uh, Miami was going to get wiped out, uh, it was the first time in my life I liked global warming. So uh, <laughs> let's stop for a Did your dick's a little hard there, Alex? Huh? The Red Cross does other things. They they teach CPR, first aid, basic basic life support. They uh, they, uh, they do a, a whole bunch of other services that you don't necessarily see, uh, you know, right up front. Bill, uh, if a ship carries three thousand passengers, that means it carries about eight thousand places to sleep because it has to have a whole crap load of people to support those three thousand passengers. So it's just like that. That's support still- them. Yeah, yeah, you're still going to need those people on board. It's not you can't if it's going to run around to the casino. And why would you even have it open? Why don't you just close it down? Well, but, you would, but you still need you're going to need kitchens and you're going to need cleaning services and you're going to need a lot of stuff that goes on. Yeah, you don't need the entertainment director, but Right. You don't need all of that. And yeah. the other thing is is Catholic charity sucks. So stay away from any of the Catholic crap because they're the ones that will not allow gay couples to adopt uh, well, adopt all their, right well uh, I, 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 yeah. I think I don't think you're as political as Tim it's not fear it's truth and you know what the closest one is is Boston is a shining example of the Catholic shit that goes on well so well, when you say give to Catholic charities go ahead but make but sure you don't during hear disaster during a disaster they're the okay first all right all right all right we got it we got to bring this thing to a close uh, and we, and we did we didn't even get around to uh, the Republicans for cock the budget uh, you know, plenty of time and, for that. and we have plenty of time for that tomorrow night. By the way, tomorrow night our guest uh, will be Rob Schneider, so uh, he'll he'll Is join today us. Wednesday? Huh? Today Wednesday? Yeah, today's Wednesday all day. Yeah. Thursday. Yeah. Well, you're getting old. Uh, Jeff, <laughs> old guy. Thank you. Rob, marginally old guy. Thank you. Uh, Mike, old guy. Thank you. Uh, Tim, old guy. Thank you. Brian, oh well, you're a young oh. punk. What can I say? Uh, Phil Meyer, old guy, and Kevin, old guy, but then Renee. Young punk with an old soul. <laughs> you, you see that uh, person who wrote on the uh, on the chat? Uh, Renee, she's a woman. Anyway. She's like 28 years old. Yeah. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yes. Right. If she isn't, I'd be surprised. <laughs> She's anyway. a Democrat, so that voids it. Anyway, everybody. Oh, uh, Your okay. man boobs void your masculinity, uh, Phil. Yeah. G- yeah. Give a, 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 everybody, give a big wave goodbye, okay? It's over. We got to go. Bye. Okay. And there they go. There goes our citizens panel off into the sunset, and we'll uh, we'll be back with them again tomorrow night. Uh, uh, yeah, hopefully, if they all want to call, uh, and and you know they they're old and and uh, they're no women. I yeah, come on. What can I say? I'm old and I'm not a woman. That's it. Anyway, I'm Alex Bennett. Next is the intersection with Jack and Amy, followed very closely at uh, 1 o'clock in the morning by Connections. I'm Alex Bennett. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I thought I hung up on uh, on Skype. Oh, I left the line open. Hold on a second, folks. I got to do this. So, so Amy can call and gripe about Brian ruining her uh, her election. I'm Alex Bennett. We'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, should talk into the mic, shouldn't I? If you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.